to our Leather Baggers shootout. We got uh, four machines that uh, are comparably equipped. You'll notice the cop style windshield, leather bags on all of them, and we got uh, nearly 1700 cc or so twin cylinder motors powering them all. You've got a British motorcycle over here with a parallel twin. After that probably comes the victory. Um, it is a V-twin, but this motorcycle kind of seems to follow its own path. Uh, where you find the Harley, the, the OG bike here, and the new to the scene Indian, kind of go on that trail of tradition and what you know Americans expect a you know leather bagger cruiser to be. They go that route. One of the nifty things about all of these bikes is all the windshields are removable. First and foremost, this one I could just walk out and pull off in half a second. The Victory, unfortunately, is the only one that requires actual tools. The Indian has two little levers, pops off. The Harley has another lever. So you can go from touring mode to trolling around the boulevard mode in a matter of seconds. As far as when you're riding the motorcycles, I think that um, the character isn't terribly different in the broad scheme of things. You've got the twin torque down low, which gives them the, the, the attitude. So you roll into town and you can keep it in third gear and boom, 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 boom. And then when you get out on the road, you know, the mid-range comes more into play. And I think that you'll find bikes like the Victory or say the Indian, you know, sort of pull, the, pull away in that regard. The Victory and the Indian both have cruise control, which I think is a very important feature. The Indian has a ride-by-water throttle, so it's yes. a much more integrated, seamless system, whereas the Victory's is kind of an add-on system but at least it has it whereas the two bikes on the end don't. I'm really amazed at how well all four of these bikes work really. I think bikes like this are kind of more, more an emotional purchase for people like some guys just want a Harley and if you do there's nothing wrong with this thing. The Heritage soft tail works pretty good. The floorboards touch down and scrape a little bit it'll lean further and go around corners. It's, it's comfortable on the freeway. Yeah, the Harley is cool. Like for an around town bike, it is the most agile, right? It's got the narrowest back tire and it feels uh, more as one. Some of these other ones, when you're pulling around doing a U-turn or something, they feel kind of floppy and heavy. The Harley does not. And another distinction is the Harley's the only one with a single disc front brake. All the other ones have dual disc front brake. I think it's kind of ironic that the two bikes that steer the quickest here, the Harley and the Triumph, also are the ones that run out of the ground clearance quickest. So you, you, you have this great maneuverability, but you really can't utilize it. It's too bad. You've got the Harley that is the most agile, lightest weight, shortest wheelbase, but yet compared to the Indian, which is 100 pounds more, give or take, than the Harley, longest wheelbase, just, you know, most ponderous bike here, especially with this, you know, 100 pound front fender on it. <laughs> you know, the Harley feels the most cruiserish of all these motorcycles, where the Indian actually handles quite well, you know, in sweeping turns, you know, you know, parking lot maneuvers, no. But sweeping turns and stuff, we've all found that it's uh, remarkably stable and uh, it has ground clearance. But on that note, we should also say that this compared to the Chieftain, right, with his different front end geometry, I mean, it's just wanting to flop. It's not as, you know, well put together handling wise in all senses as the Chieftain is. I don't think it's just at lower speeds, I think it's at all speeds. I mean, you mentioned sweeping corners. This bike, the, the Chief Vintage, it, it does steer well, it handles well, it, it will hold a line nicely, but you try to do a series of link turns and you have to really muscle it. Whereas the Chieftain, which was bigger and heavier, did it easily. It, it felt it felt positively sport bike like it's, in it's comparison. Yeah, right? it's transitioning. Maybe that would be the good move for Indian to do is to put that frame from the Chieftain with its steeper rake onto this. It would make the bike feel lighter even if it is the heavy. While we're talking about handling, I think we should talk about the victory because its suspension feels overly stiff at first, especially when compared to the other bikes, but you get it into some bumpy corners and I really feel that it tracks the best. It, it doesn't get into that sort of you know, hobby horse type of thing going over rolling bump. I don't know if it's the inverted fork or just stiffer springs, but it really seems more stable and planted to the road. I'd agree with that. And if there was a race down a mountain road, I think we'd all jump on that one to set the, our best time. Seems like all, all the systems in it are better integrated. You can tell it's kind of going for the old classic American look, but it's got a completely modern look to it. When you start trying to make time on a, on a curvy road, it, it kind of wins. And strangely enough, the Indian's right behind it even though you wouldn't think so to look at it. Yeah, it's got good ground clearance, whereas uh, you're touching down on the Harley and the, the Triumph fairly often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but strictly due to ground clearance. It's not necessarily the, the chassis that's holding it back. It's right. uh, you're dragging things I earlier. Think the, I think the chassis is holding the Harley back. This morning on the freeway, when I was going on that big sweeping exit ramp, every expansion joint got the bike into this little wobble. I mean, it, was, it didn't scare me or anything, but it said, okay, this is this is about as fast as you want to go. Look at the Victory. It's the, the only one with the upside down fork. It feels yeah. a little more solid than the other bike. And even though it has the same kind of configuration as the Harley, like you were saying, that the, the styling is more avant-garde. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I think we've all come to really appreciate the, the way this looks with its nice uh, paint and pinstriping. This bike has really come to grow on me. They've taken the uh, important cues that have made the traditional cruiser important and integrated it here, but use it in a modern sense with you know, the upside down forks, the steel braided lines, good cornering clearance you know, the integration of the bags. And we were talking about like the uh, crash bars as well. I mean, the way they just come down and follow the bags. I mean, it's just so nicely put together. The integrated tall LED rear tail light, um, just really nice. The engine, not so much. I, when it comes to big cruisers like these, I like this Indian engine, low revving, tons of torque, get me out of the corner. I'm not shifting gears, you know, stick it in third. A small price to pay really for a good overall bike. I think it's, uh, it only lacks a little bit of low end torque compared to the Indian, which right. is kind of the king of real, right off the bottom. It's the most displacement, so I think compared it's got to, the torque. Compared to the others, it, it'll, it'll wax the Harley. The Triumph's got a good motor too. The Triumph has a great Triumph's motor. It's nice, the Triumph's got a fantastic seat. It's like nice, cushy some kind of foam. Do we all agree that Triumph, Triumph has the best seat? Best. Triumph has yeah. the best seat. Yeah, all these does. seats are good, but whenever I sit on the Triumph, I just feel happy. It feels nice, doesn't it? it yeah. Makes your, makes your butt feel, feel good. They need to send a sample to every manufacturer out there and just be like, use this seat foam, you know? I think the Triumph would rate better in the handling department if it had more ground clearance. I don't, I'm not sure if the Harley would. I think having more ground clearance might bring out more of the flaws in the stiffness of the chassis and stuff like that. On the poor Harley, I mean, it just gets whooped on. It is it's just the flat out slowest bike here. Roll on contests. It does have the least power. It's yeah. uh, the twin cam 103, but it's not the new high output 103. And so it is lacking in some power. It's, it's fairly light, so it's not lagging a whole bunch, but it does feel like it, you got to twist the grip a little bit harder. The Harley to me feels a little bit old fashioned. But that's what guys want who buy Harley. If you are the kind of guy who needs attention, I don't think you could do better than to step on an Indian. Everywhere you look is something really cool, you know, from the, the fringes, got uh, internally wired bars, chrome, switch gear, you've got Indian logos everywhere on the bar ends, on the motor, and the motor does look amazing. With it, all the chrome it has, in any place you look at it, it's looking back at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Really sort of earns its MSRP because of the attention to detail that Polaris gave this motorcycle. Yeah. All these bikes here are nice, but you know, it's hard to fault this bike in terms of cleanliness and you know, craftsmanship. Yeah, and even just the seat and bags. This is leather and this costs money, right? This is this is part of the reason why it, the MSRP is the most expensive. See, so yeah, all these bikes have different personalities and we kind of like them all, but for different reasons. You pull the bags off the Indian and the thing looks really great still with the bags removed. It's a really simple job. Whereas the Indian, or the Victory, Really nice looking bags, but you take them off and the thing looks like you took a significant part of the motorcycle off. It looks kind of ugly, so you're not going to be pulling the bags off that one. Evans, what would be your top pick if you had to park one in your garage? I would have to go with the Victory. I, th I think it's the most put together package. I like the way the engine revs. It's torquey, but it does have that rev out thing, whereas the Indian, it feels like it's revving a little slower, which it is, and even though it's generating power, it just doesn't move me the way it does. It, it might be going just as fast, but it doesn't feel like it. I love the way this bike handles. And personally, I, I like the styling because it's not trying to be a classic bike. I mean, it's taken some classic touches and done a complete reinterpretation of I like it's more combination of tradition, but modernistic styling. Um, you know, if I could pick and choose some stuff, I would love to take the Triumph seat and put it onto here. I would like to take the Indian bags and put it onto here. I want the quick release windscreen, but I'm willing to make those concessions. You know, again, for an all around motorcycle and at the price that this motorcycle is at, you know, I, I, that's the one I'd have to go and spend my money on. I'm torn here. The, the, the Triumph is the cheapest bike and it really does not lack much to these other ones. And so if you can get over the fact that it's not a V-twin cruiser, it's a parallel twin cruiser, the motor is great and the thing handles good and there's a, a good value uh, equation to that. 
but as far as what stands out to me it's the indian all day i mean it is an amazing machine every place you look is a beautiful piece or trim part and some people are going to be moving away from a harley davidson dealership and upping the extra dollars to afford something this special from a purely functional standpoint i think the victory is the best put together one all the systems work together best it's some of the most most integrated one but no matter what we say I bet you Harley Davidson is still going to sell way more of these than all these other bikes. But watch out for Indian. They're they're going to be making some dents into the Harley market, I bet. I think so. Okay, so to find out the full story, you got to read the pages of Motorcycle.com. We're going to have our full scorecard, rank all these bikes in different categories, and see how it all shakes up. But there's our subjective views. Stay tuned for more. Baby, time is ticking. Time is ticking. It's the end before we know it. Girl.